Dan from the Razor's Edge, um, and I'm here with Cam Lee of um, of Massacre, and we're going to talk about the new album. We're going to talk about death metal, and we're going to, you know, let's we're going to talk about yeah about what's going on with this with the obviously the new lineup that's in place, and how um, much of a bastard I am. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to keep on the positive stuff, man. Just on the positive. I know. I'm just <laughs> so. Um, I mean, I'll start. The new this line has been in place since um, 2020. Is that correct? Yeah, came in uh, 2020 um, after uh, a couple of different lineup changes. Yeah. I, um, um, but uh, these are guys. Are, these are guys all I've I've known for years. Uh, Rogan Johansson. I've I've been doing other bands and projects with him for uh, 15 years now, and uh, so they're all familiar people that I'm familiar with and I've done projects with in the past. So they're not like just a bunch of guys that yeah. I randomly went out and grabbed. Uh, I've known all these guys. With regards to obviously that, and that was kind of like something I was going to, going to ask you because you've worked with these guys, um, mm-hmm. but you're doing, you're obviously you're doing massacre. Did it, right. ta- did it take any kind of time to gel or did, and did you have to kind of lead on? This is what, this is what a new massacre record needs to be. Or did it actually um, work quite well? Because you've had it that. Wor- it, it worked really well because mainly all of the members that came in are Massacre fans. Mm. Um, literally, uh, Roga Johansson, Johnny Pedersen, uh, Scott Fairfax. They, they, all, all these guys grew up as Massacre fans. And I'm talking grew up. They're, they go yeah. back to the, the demo days back in the 1985, you know, 86, 87 era. So they grew up listening to us that far back. So they're all fans of the band um, in that aspect. So when I asked Roga, because Roga was the first that I asked, uh, he was like, yes, right away. He was like, yes, I, I, I know exactly what you need uh, as far as riffs go. And uh, he started sending riffs four hours after I had asked him. Four hours later, he started sending riffs. Jesus. So it um, it definitely kind of it, it it worked. Then there was no kind of teething pains getting people um, on board to get things to kind of get things working. Because right, I mean, everybody was on board really quick. There was a couple of questions. Uh, of course, um, you know, what should we sound like? Should we try to sound like old massacre? Should we try to? Uh, and I I told especially Roga Johansson and Johnny. I said, you guys are Swedish guitar players in your own bands, and and I love I love. Swedish death metal. Mm. So I said, please don't feel uh, that you have to stay in these parameters of trying to sound like an American death metal band. I said, you know, of course we have to have that footprint. We have to stick to that blueprint and that formula, but feel free to explore a little bit if you want to add a little bit of that Swedish flair. Because I love Swedish death metal because it has that sort of crust punk sort of drive to it. And I'm a big DB fan and a big crust punk fan. So I love that kind of uh, aggression. So I said, please feel free to do that. And plus Swedish death metal can be a little bit melodic at times. Mm. So I said, don't, don't feel that you have to be so reserved that you can't add that into the uh, mix as well. And I think because of that, we got a broader sound than we normally would have if we just stuck with a Florida, typical Florida death metal sound. Because of those different elements that are being brought in to kind of expand what you're, you know, expand on what is the, is the traditional sound, but making it, you know, having more of it. Yeah. And Scott brought something that was uh, just amazing. Scott brought his, his solos and his, his aesthetics, which was, I remember he asked me, he goes, do you, want, do you want me to do just whammy bar solos? And I said, no, I want you to do Scott Fairfax solos. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love Memoriam because of your guitar playing. And uh, he brought that flavor in, which I, I feel is a very kind of uh, British UK uh, style of death metal into it that has this sort of kind of, uh, it's a more smoother feeling. So when he, you, his solos come in, it kind of, it, it feels not forced yeah. it feels like it, it goes with the music not against the music i hear i hear you. i hear it kind of look, just flows in and just really yep. yeah no. um with obviously the song right right uh, the song writing side of things did anyone particularly take charge on it or was it just a complete collaborative someone brings ideas because obviously you'd have been doing this over various locations was it yeah. someone brought um, ideas in and then it, it was just- it was really simple. The way we do things, the way I've been doing things, especially with Roga, is Roga writes riffs to a click track, yeah. and he'll he'll record those things on his uh, digital workstation, and he'll send those to me, and I'll kind of go through them, and I'll say, okay, this is good, but this part maybe at signa- this time signature needs to change, or this riff 
at this particular part in the song needs to maybe be extended. So we did a lot of that, but there wasn't because we've been, I've been working with him for so long and all these guys for so long, they knew how I kind of work yeah. and they, it was, it went smooth. It wasn't like, there wasn't too much of now nah, let's do this and that a couple of things were added. A couple of things were taken away from, but overall it went pretty smooth because everyone did their parts and they knew their parts well. And it went, it went well. It's like when you, it's like building a house with a bunch of guys that are uh, in their trade who've done it for the years. Mm. Like you have plumbers that are, you know, they're master plumbers or electricians that are master electricians. And then you have the drywall guys that come in. All these guys knew exactly what they were doing. So it went to well together because the foundation was old school death metal. Yeah. And everyone knew that. Imagery wise, because I mean, for me as a death metal fan, imagery is important. Um, yes. <laughs> you know, I need to have, um, I need to have a cool, I need to have cool artwork. I need mm -hmm. to have, you know, I need to have a low, again, I need to have a logo that is instantly recognizable as a death metal logo. Right. Um, what, you know, how did the, the imagery for the, for the album come, um, come about? Um, were there ideas that you, that you had and obviously you spoke to your artist about, or was it based on lyrical themes? Um, how did that kind of get put together? Well, basically, um, Wes Ben Scott did the art and I remember, uh, when the label said, who do you want to do the art? I said, look, I, I like this guy that does this art. And I, I picked out the albums that he did, mm. which was some autopsy albums and the Slayer album, the creator album. And there, and, and right away the label was like, Oh, we know him. And I was like, Oh, okay. That's great. And within a couple hours later, I got an email from him. Okay. And he's like, introduced himself. Hey, this is Wes. Uh, you know, great to meet you. I'm a big fan. What would you like me to do? And I just wrote back one word. I said, Lovecraft. Okay. I wrote back one word and he wrote back, yes. <laughs> and he, said, he was really excited. He said, he wrote me back, said he's always wanted to do something Lovecraft, but he just didn't have the, you know, a, a reason to do it or, or any avenue to do it. And now he felt that he could do it. And it went, again, it went smooth here. I was working with an artist that was excited to do something, yeah. not just like, okay, here's another job. No, he was actually very excited to do it. And I really wanted Lovecraft aesthetics. And the only thing I think I remember saying to him as far as direction goes, because I don't like to do that with anybody, I, any artist I work with, even directors of the videos, I didn't kind of, I, I only give a little bit and I let them have their own creative freedom. I think the only thing I told him is, as I said, I want it to look like it's underwater. Okay. It's kind of like if you went to, if you dove into the ocean without a mask on and what you would see underwater, I wanted that kind of feeling. And I think he delivered that perfectly. With regard to lyrical concepts for the songs, um, what was your kind of, um, did you have a particular um, goal in mind of what you wanted to hit lyrical, um, with the lyrical concepts? Um, can you talk to me about that? Yes, of course. They're all love songs. Okay. They're, they're love ballads, they're love, you know, it's all about love and the, and the love of, of getting together with creatures from beneath the sea and gods from outer space. <laughs> no, no, actually, yes. Uh, um, I, I use Lovecraft aesthetics a lot in my lyrics, uh, but, you know, uh, there's, there's deeper meaning. Uh, some people that know me personally can pick up some of that deeper meaning, but on the outer meaning of it, it's misanthropy. <laughs> Because I'm a misanthrope, so it's my my way to kind of uh, express my misanthropy and my hatred of all humans and mankind. Because I felt that Lovecraft did that very well in his stories. Um, the the outer beings, the eldritch creatures, and the gods from his stories kind of look at humanity as as nothing. We're we're just you know we're we're just there. We're like ants, you know what we consider as ants. So I feel the same way, you know my eternal misanthropy is the same way. So this is a way that I can express that and have fun with it. With regard of, you have an international lineup. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there are, you, there are obviously there are shows planned. Um, I believe you're playing UK death fest um, next mm -hmm. year. Um, yep. How is the, how is the, how, how will the lineup work with regard to live performances and any potential tours that you may look at doing um, obviously in the upcoming um, with obviously following the release of the record? Yeah, actually, what we're doing is uh, I felt when I put these members together, I knew some of them wouldn't tour. Um, Roga definitely doesn't tour. Uh, Brian Jarr, the, the drummer, doesn't really tour. But that wasn't important to me at the time. The important mm -hmm. thing at the time was getting a good record, a solid record out. And I knew these guys could deliver on a solid record. Um, when it comes to the performance, 
that's secondary. And I knew that uh, I was going to be pulling in probably performance members, members that would come in and help us do the live performances, which we do have a performance lineup yeah. right now that's currently working with us. Uh, right now, it's I look at Massacre the way that I guess you could look at Dark Throne, with Dark Throne being Fenris and Nocturnum as being the two key members. Yeah. You have to look at Massacre as myself and Mike Borders being the key members. We're the foundation. Yeah. There could be members that come in and go and some of the members of the state. Now, Johnny Pedersen, who actually played on the album, has said that he would definitely join us when we come to Europe. Uh, Scott Fairfax also said he would definitely do it if he wasn't busy with his other bands. Yeah. So there's possibilities that some of the members from the album will play uh, with us live, and then there's other times where we'll have performance members that come in and help us in the live situation of performing. But key members will always be myself and Mike Borders. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um. I wanted to have a. Uh, I want to ask you some questions regarding death metal as, as a whole, because obviously okay. you have you have a history within the scene, um, a, a long, very very long, rich history yeah. with it. Um, I'd say going back to the beginning. But yeah, yeah okay. go, going back to the beginning, exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. um, with regard to how how the scene has evolved and grown, um, mm -hmm. how I mean, because I've noticed in my lifetime of listening to death metal, which is kind of late nineties to now. I think it's now at a, a place where a lot of a lot of bands who are doing this style are they're really hitting kind of the heights of their careers. Even a lot of veteran bands are getting to the point where they're much more popular with um, you know I don't want to say more commercial audience, but definitely right. but they're, they're not just playing dive bars. Essentially, they're playing right. large scale you know large scale tours, um, large festivals, and and kind of quite quite prime festival slots. How have you personally seen that that progression from the beginning to now, and the changes in the way the styles performed? Because obviously you have the Florida style, you have right. the, the, the Swedish style. Then I mean, if you go to the states, you look at kind of like the New York style is yeah, there's very a, yep. different. Mm -hmm. Then you yep. have Texas doing the, um, the 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 kind of like they are the the cornerstone of of the brutal scene, especially in the states. Mm -hmm. And Cali's got it's got the more tech side. How have you? Yep. Do you kind of, I mean, do you follow these different styles? Do you like these different styles? Is it good that you've got this variety within the, the, the genre of music? I will say that um, there's definitely because, uh, like when I say it, I do death metal, I just say death metal. But now everyone says, well, you do old school death metal because they had to categorize it yeah. because it makes it different. And uh, But to me, it's I'm just doing the same thing I was doing. Yeah. You know, 40 years ago, it's the same thing. But, um, yeah, I do know that uh, because of – here's the one thing I can say, the longevity of it, what you were touching on. Why is, the, why is it still prevalent now, 40 years later? It is the base route to all metal right now. Hmm. If you really think about everything metal on all the genres all the way across the board, pull it back. Death metal is the base route. And the ironic, funny thing is when in 1984, 1985, when I started in death metal – the base root of metal during that time was hair metal. Yeah. It was bands like, you know, Motley Crue and, and, and Poison and uh, Winger and stuff like that. And I remember people in, in popular metal bands during the time said, the stuff you're doing is shit. That's crap. That'll never last. That's go That's just a fad. It's going to go away. It's horrible music. No one cares. 40 years later, it's the foundation of all metal right now. Even thrash is like it's the foundation. Death metal has its 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 roots in thrash, hardcore punk, and and D beat punk. It has its roots deep in that that those three seeds, and it branches out from there. And then it branches out even further with all the genres, like you were saying. There's so many different. That you have the slam death metal, which is definitely the New York style. Mm. You have the brutal death metal, which is 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 just gravity blasting intense brutal uh you know stuff that's like the texas style you have the more technical stuff coming out of california so you do have these little branches that all branch off and do their own thing but the core seed is always growling vocals and heavy guitar riffs those two things right there it all pulls back down to this and that's the core of all metal right now and, and no matter what even if it's metal core it's got its roots in death metal. With regard to the way that, um, I mean, obviously you you touched on obviously people saying, oh, you know, you're an old school death metal band. There's mm -hmm. been a definite um, upsurge with popularity of newer bands doing that old school death metal sound. Right. Um, yeah. 
does do you f feel that that um, upsurge um, is has a positive effect on on what Massacre are doing, especially with releasing an album with bands who are with obviously around with, where there's a lot of newer bands doing this style. Does that do you feel that will have a positive effect on on this on the release and how and how it will do? Um, is there any kind of thought on that, or is it just, or do you have kind of a I know what I'm doing with obviously God to doing this. I've been doing it for you know as long as I have. Well, it's a it's a little bit of both. Uh, I don't want to seem like arrogant and and narcissistic and say, oh, I know I'm doing the right thing. Um, I and it's a little bit of both. But it, it the title of the album Resurgence is more than just a title. Mm -hmm. it, it it is the feeling. It's the expression of what's going on. It's the resurgence of the old school style death metal. It's the resurgence of Massacre, me being back in Massacre after so many years. So it's a resurgence of a lot of things. So the title in itself means more than just, hey, there's the title of the album. Hmm. Um, it means more. And it, the meaning behind it is everything that you just touched on. Um, yes, I know what I'm doing. And this is finally the first time in Massacre since it's, you know, since 40 years ago yeah. or 35 years ago that I actually am in the captain's seat and I'm trying to show people this is the reason, you know, it should have always been not saying that I should have always been the leader, but I should have had a little bit more control and a little bit more uh, a say in how the band went. Now I have that and I'm trying to bring that bring the band back to a proper follow up to what I would say was from beyond. Uh, so that has always been my mindset um, as far as the music goes. Yes, I mean, it's going to be a resurgence because we're in that time frame where it is every decade or 20 years, every 20 years to a decade, you kind of go, go back. And we're at that pinnacle point where music is returning on itself because you've got the guys that grew up that are my age and grew up with it. And guys like your age, they probably have kids now that are just getting to the age where they're going to start listening to music and they're going and picking up their their parents they're hey man what was my dad into you know back when he was growing up and they're listening to it and they're like whoa this is pretty i did the same thing when i was little i remember picking up uh, going from like you know this this is the 70s so going from listening to shit like disco duck to say what does dad listen to and then going and picking out Jimi hendrix albums and going whoa this is amazing why wasn't i listening to this before why is dad hiding this in the in the record shelf behind all the 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 pansy stuff you know so it's kind of like that a really final question out of me with regard to kind of like the future after after obviously you've the release of this record um i know you've obviously you mentioned you've got other projects with with these members do you have more musical um things lined up um for the rest you know going into the, the next let's say 12 to 18 months at the moment or are you um putting... actually yeah okay uh, i do uh massacre for one um I'm, this massacre now is kind of like my key thing so I, I've, I've decided i'm spearheading everything in massacre and we have a lot of stuff coming up we have actually we have an ep already recorded that should be coming out i'm hoping in the next six months okay um we have uh single releases that we're doing on ourselves because I'm old school and I like the, the whole do it yourself kind of attitude. So we go through Bandcamp, our Bandcamp page, yep. which uh, this, this Halloween, this Sunday, okay. um, we're, re we're releasing our, our own single. Uh, so we're releasing a new song that you can only get on Bandcamp okay. uh, uh, this Halloween. Uh, we're going to continue to that tradition. We've been doing that since this band got back together and, and we've been kind of sticking to that tradition of releasing our own self-release singles. And we got a lot of plans for that coming up in the next year. Um, seven inches are coming out. We got some seven inch coming out uh, for those that love to collect seven inches. So those are going to be coming out. Uh, like I said, sticking with nuclear blast, a new EP. And we're already working on a new album already because in a pandemic, and you're locked in and you can't go anywhere. That's nothing else better to do, but work on your new music yeah. instead of sitting there, you know, getting all uh, upset that you can't go out and tour. So we're continuing to work and continue to push forward. That sounds, that sounds wicked. That sounds wicked. Um, thank you. Appreciate you obviously okay. talking to us. Um, is there anything else you want to add to the end of this for people to um, obviously um, to know or um, at all? Well, just like I said, um, Massacre is here to stay. Um, I'm now in the captain's seat, uh, so it's finally uh, back in kind of like me steering the, the ship here, and I'm, I have plans to steer the ship in the right direction. Um, as an old man at 55 years old, which I'll be 55 in two days because my birthday is on Halloween. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, you know fans 
that like this style of old school death metal stick with it because I we're going to definitely bring it and we're going to be bringing it fast and hard and in the next couple years you're going to get so much massacre you're going to be sick of us <laughs> that's sick that's sick thank you very much thanks for listening make sure you keep up to date with future episodes by subscribing to our channels for more information on this podcast or for all the latest music news reviews interviews and more head over to our website www.therazorsedge.rocks